Hello guys and welcome back to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. Once again I'm Greg and I'm going to be giving you my predicted lineup for this weekend's game against West Brom as well as a little bit of injury news off the back of Ancelotti's press conference. So from what Ancelotti has said, Holgate and Branthwaite are the only two players injured, which insinuates two things. Uh, the first is that Delph is back and fit. We weren't sure going into the, the Salford game, but it turns out he's he's in contention. And the other thing it insinuates is that Awobi's lack of selection, even in even in squads, is not down to injury, but just down to selection. Uh, same as Balassi. But there were a few rumours suggesting that he'd taken a knock or was injured and that's why he wasn't being selected, uh, even for the bench. Uh, other than that, he said that Branthwaite's injury, he's given us a bit of a timeline and said, no surgery, but between three and five weeks of just recovery. And Holgate is obviously still on the same timeline as we had before. So that really just takes us into the squad. And for me, it's very much going to be a repeat of what we played uh, and, and how we lined up and went out against Spurs because it worked so well so why would you possibly change it there were obviously a few things in the Salford game but I don't think enough happened to change how we'd line up uh, obviously Sigurdsson was uh, was decent got a goal got an assist you know against league to opposition but it's still it's still having an impact that said, I, I would not disrupt the midfield. We, we finally got a midfield that's working well and functioning as a unit, so why disrupt that? Um, so, I, I you know, I can't see Sigurdsson coming into the squad. Um, Gordon and Nkunku I thought were particularly impressive. Uh, Nkunku, for a, for a debut that young, uh, we saw signs of how good he could be in pre-season, uh, composed on the ball, just uh, very crisp with his passing, didn't look like he could get shaken off the ball, knew when to attack and then knew when to defend as well. Uh, which is a problem I think we see in Kenny a little bit, is that his attacking uh, is very positive and very direct, but his positioning can be very questionable uh, and, and lead to us getting caught out on that right side. Uh, but the issue with Nkunku and Gordon is they play in positions that are going to be very hard to upset. The players in front of them in the pecking order, uh, Dean and Richarlison, it's going to be very tough to unseat them. That said, if an injury were to come to one of those players, it would look like we would be in capable hands in terms of backup. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, and we also didn't really see any any players in other positions, uh, maybe that were a little bit more up for debate. Like right back, uh, we didn't see Kenny really go out there and say, get Coleman out of the team, give me a bit of a run, look how impressive I can be. You know, he didn't play badly. He was solid. Uh, he did what he needed to, but he didn't put in a performance uh, like Nkunku or like Gordon that, that really just put himself in Ancelotti's brain. In my opinion, some of you might have seen how he played and thought it was very impressive. Um, but for me, he hasn't done enough to upset that starting lineup. Uh, so looking at the lineup, I think same formation, same shape, same personnel. So Jordan and Pickford, uh, Jordan Pickford in goal started this season brightly. Against Spurs, obviously, was then dropped um, into in for the League Cup. Good to see Virginia get a uh, a start and a clean sheet. Good for his confidence. Uh, but obviously, Pickford back into the lineup. There's no reason to drop him after the Spurs game. Made a couple of good saves. Commanded his box well. Came out and punched. New enter, new enter, hold, new enter, parry, and didn't make any stupid mistakes. His attitude seemed right, and they're the two most important things for Pickford at the moment. No stupid mistakes and keep his attitude right. Uh, so keep him in the team and, and let's hope he can continue to elevate the levels and um, and stay where he was against Spurs. Then going from right to left, um, I think Coleman retains his spot at right back in the press conference. Ancelotti has just said uh, he thinks Coleman could go on and play until, until he's 40, uh, which you can understand. Uh, he's obviously a, a reliable player, been around, been around the club for a while, so, so we sort of know what he's about. Uh, maybe it's a bit more confusing to hear as an Everton fan who's been seeing Coleman for a while to hear a comment like that because we have seen, you know, a couple of injuries have, have not helped him, but we have seen the level drop off a little bit, you know. He's not got that... that It, it wasn't even pace so much. It's just, just the way he could run really directly. Um, you know, he's lost that a little bit. Uh, we, we don't see him pop up as much with, with goals and assists. Uh, he's still a solid player, and you know I understand what Carlo means. He can he could keep playing until he's forty and put in performances like he's putting in now, uh, because he's not as reliant on what he used to be. He has a different toolbox, a different skill set, 
Um, but it was quite confusing to hear that sentiment from Ancelotti just because we've seen how much Coleman's game has changed. Whereas Ancelotti maybe sees just a solid player who could keep going for a while, uh, is in very is very fit, um, and you know has has overcome a few big injuries to 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 stay at the level he is. Uh, and then I think the centre back partnership with Branthwaite now injured is pretty safe. I, you know we haven't seen Gibson. I doubt he's in Ancelotti's mind to to start playing into the squad, but we will see him on the bench a bit. Maybe you know see him see him getting a few minutes, which which is nice, but at the expense at the expense of Branthwaite, which is a shame. So I you know I think we'll obviously see Michael Keane, who looks quite dangerous from set pieces at the moment. Um, fair play to I'm not going to take a punt, uh, but Ancelotti's son I can't remember his name, uh, who is dealing a bit with the set pieces. Uh, he's he's clearly got quite a good setup uh, and, and and helped Keane a bit because in pre season, um, and you know in this League Cup game he's he's. His positioning's been good. He's heading well, uh, and he's picking up a few goals from corners. Uh, so, so fair play, Michael Keane. Next to Yeri Mina, of course. He's looked pretty bright since we've come back. Uh, I think he gets a bad rep for being maybe a bit clumsy, uh, which I, I haven't really seen in his game for a while. So, I'm 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 happy to stick with Mina and Mina and Keane. I don't think is a bad partnership, especially when we've got the personnel in front of them that we now do. Um, but you know that's 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 sort of what we're forced into at the moment. Um, at left back, of course, Luca Dean, sensational. I'm, I'm running out of of positive things to say about him week in week out. Obviously, um, assist for for Calvert Lewin against Spurs. Came on out of position against uh, Salford and then still played to the level you'd expect him to. Very, but made it very obvious that he was. Um, sort of the quality in the team when he came on. His set piece delivery is great. His delivery from open play is fantastic. And he can get back, you know, it's almost a shame for Nkunku that he's got such a good player ahead of him. Uh it's one position we have been blessed as as Everton fans, uh is left back over the last few years. Then as I said, sticking with what we what we had is the same midfield, so Decore. And what I will say about these players that we've brought in um, is it obviously it's great to see them hit the ground running uh, and play well straight away. Obviously, there's there's normally an adjustment period. Um, Davy Clarson never got over that adjustment period, uh, but but you see players come in and they've got to get up to pace. Obviously, for Decorah, that's not such a problem, especially coming from his last season being a Premier League season. But you know, Allen, you'd expect a bit of adjustment from Serie A, very different football, and. Um, not in the midfield, but Hammers. Obviously, a lot of people questioned how he was going to come in. But what we've seen as well is that these players that we've brought in to just be disruptive or play play roles. Almost, almost. We we knew what we needed in the midfield. We needed a disruptor and we needed a box to box player. And we got Allen in to disrupt and intercept, and we got Decore in to back and forward. Uh, and you know, he did that very well against Spurs. But we've also got these two personnel in to do those jobs. And they've bought so much else as well. They haven't just... Alan hasn't just come in and disrupted. He's shown a great range of passing. Um, Decore hasn't just come in and run. Uh, he's shown great composure, great tackling. And we're just seeing a very well-oiled midfield. Um, players with quality beyond just the roles they're meant to play. So that being said, Decore, Alan, and then slightly more advanced, um, Andre Gomez, who seems to be elevated by the increase in talent around him. Um, obviously, he's been playing next to... Yeah, and I'm not saying these are bad players, but Tom Davies, Morgan Schneidlin, Gilfie Sigurdsson uh, in almost a pivot for a while, and it's not shown the best of his ability. And you, you, you'd say a good player should elevate those around him, but Andre Gomez does somewhat rely on having those, those people around him to allow him to express himself a little bit more. And hopefully we'll see him continue to to rise this season. Same front three as well. Hammers outright, what a debut he had. Everything I wanted to see from him, to be honest with you. It was just um it was just great to watch Hammers Rodriguez do what we wanted Hammers Rodriguez to do, you know, come on. Be that quality above, just have that star quality, you know, every touch he took you went, oh, nice. Every ball he played you went, 
haven't seen anyone do that for a while at Everton. Um, he just bought, they looked a level above the rest. He really did. And that's exactly what we wanted. And it put a lot of people, uh, it quieted a lot of people who went, oh, they've just bought in an old fella who's, who wasn't good enough for this team. Um, and, you know, the, the uh, you know, I could carry on, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll stop myself. Hammers on the right. Of course, Richarlison on the left. Missed a few chances against Spurs, granted. But he's also made a few goals where we were struggling before in the past. So, you know, one bum game doesn't say. Hey, you know, he also got into the opportunities. He got into the goal scoring uh, situations. He did round the keeper, although he, you know, he shortened his angle too much. Didn't didn't get his head up and see Calvert Lewin. But that being said, he's quality. And, you know, if you keep playing him, he'll keep getting in those positions. And he will, pardon me, he will get those goals. Up front, Calvert Lewin, of course. Scored against Spurs. He's off the mark. And he just, he still looks like he's going from strength to strength. Obviously, he dropped off a little bit after the uh, the break, the COVID break. But he's back. You know, what what a header. That was great to see. Um, you know, you, you that's the one, you'd see it go in and you you move with it, don't you? you? You put it in yourself. And Ferguson looked so happy on the bench when it went in as well. It was great to see. Uh, keep him in there and he will get goals. And sadly, Moise Keane didn't really do enough to upset either. He didn't have a great game, did he, against Salford? Got his goal. He's nice to see him off the sheet anyway. Uh, but that's the team, of course. Pickford in goal. Coleman, Keane, Mina and Dean. To Corey Allen and Gomez. And then a front three of Hammers, calvert Lewin, and Richarlison. Great team. Why change it? We've had a nice discussion about a few of the players. Is there anything you'd change? Do you think Sigurdsson did well enough? Do you think Bernard played well in that central role and could... Um, could come in for Gomez. Uh, what do you think is going on with a Wobi? Would you like to see him in the team? Who would you like to see on the bench? Uh, would you like to see Balassi get a few a few chances, a few minutes? Um, would you drop Bernard off the bench? Would you bring a Wobi onto the bench? Uh, and other than that, let me know what your eleven would be, what the shape would be. Would you keep it the same, or would you make some changes? Uh, let's hope for another good result, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>